soil in the food cube. Now, as we know, the food cube is a wicking bed, so it has a couple of requirements on the soil that you use. At Biofilter, we sell a premium wicking mix, and it's ideal. So it's, it's, it's really nicely blended soil for wicking beds. It also obviously has a lot of nutrients in there, so it's, it's, it's just, it'll, you'll get a really good outcome if you use our premium wicking mix. But if you want to do your own thing, uh, there are a couple of just requirements that you need your soil to fulfill. The first is uh, carbon content. So uh, you want your soil to have a really nice amount of carbon in there. Um, that'll help with the wicking. Um, if, you can, if, if you can find a blend that has lots of fibrous material in there, that'll, that'll help as well. You don't want your soil to be too sandy because then it just drain, drain too much. Um, but then again, you also don't want your, your soil to be too compacted or too, there's there to be too much clay in there because that won't allow enough air pockets in your soil to allow the water to wick up through the soil to uh, the root zones of the plants. Um, so yeah, you can't have it too compacted or too loose, lots of carbon, and obviously like any soil, you want plenty of nutrients and minerals in there as well um, to get the best outcome for your, for your plants. For soil, when you're actually, pardon me, when you set up your food cube and you know, you've, you've made sure it's watertight um, and you're about to put the soil in, you actually wanna make sure that before you put all your soil into the food cube, you stuff or you tuck the soil into the wicking cones first, into all the wicking cones. If you don't do that and you end up putting all your, you know, your soil into the food cube without stuffing it into the cones, you won't get any wicking motion anyway because you know, the water can't reach the rest of the soil profile if there's no soil in the wicking cones. Um, I've done that a bunch of times and it is not fun because basically what you have to do is you have to take all your soil out and then poke all the soil into the wicking cones and then put all your soil back in and yeah, it's not ideal. One of the main things that you should think about before you start putting the soil in um, the food cube is testing whether or not it's watertight. The easiest way to do that is just put water in it. So um, I've got a hose here. We can just put some water in. Now, all, all I'm doing is I'm just putting it into one of the uh, aeration cones. So you want to fill up the water to about this height. Okay, so the water is at about this mark and looking at the outlets, there's no water leaking out of them. So this, this food cube is sealed properly. If you find that there's water coming out, as you said, you're just gonna have to start again. Now, you'll probably get a bit of water you know, on the ground. Um, so make sure you're doing it in an area where you can have proper drainage. But hopefully, you know, you've set up your food cube in an area where that's appropriate anyway, because there's times where you'll need to drain your water out. The level setter on the food cube allows you to choose what height you'd want your water to sit at. If you want your food cube to be full, you have it here and you can fill it up all the way. If you want it to drain out, obviously you just swing it around and the water comes out. Now, you can really choose where you have your water level at at any one time to suit your you know, gardening habits and how you want to do things. But there's one rule that you want to make sure you follow. We've designed the food cube so that when the water drops below this mark here, it actually, that indicates that the water has gone below the false floor and it allows oxygen to be sucked through the air vents into the root zones of the plants. Now that helps your plants stay healthy and the food cube, um, to, it prevents it from becoming anaerobic. So basically the rule is make sure that your water level pulses below this point every one to two weeks. Typically what will happen with the food cube is you'll, you'll have it on maximum and as the plants take up the water, your water level in the reservoir will drop below this point and oxygen can be sucked through. Now that's a great way to use it. Um, and if that's what's happening, then just make sure you fill up your food cube after your water level has dropped below this mark. And to test that, just twist it around to see if it has dropped below that point. After one to two weeks, if there's been a lot of rain, you're thinking, oh wow, the soil might have been soaking in water for all that time. Just tip it below this point here. And obviously not, no water's coming out now, but if there was water coming out, it would drain out to below this point. You'll get oxygen being sucked through the system and your plants will stay healthy. 
Now, also, if you've just planted seedlings or seeds, the benefit of the wicking bed system won't come into play because the root zones of those plants are too small. So we suggest you top water until the, the, the plants can establish, and once they do, they'll be able to reach the reservoir. Also, in that initial stage, you want to keep your water level as high as possible 